give folks a minute to get in. You want me to put the slideshow up now or do you want to wait? Go ahead and wait, Steve. And Steve, I know Rourke's on your team. Does he need to be promoted to panelist? Uh, I think he's, yeah, it might be good. He's really going to take notes, but in case he needs to say something, it probably would be good to do that. Okay, done. Oh, that didn't go. Hang on. Oh, you know what? Hang on. There we go. Great. All right. For those of you who have already signed on, good evening. Um, we're just going to give everybody another minute or so just to get logged in, and then we will start the meeting. Looks like a few more people are trying to log in. All right, why don't we go ahead and start? So good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for attending. Uh, we've had one meeting prior, and that was a pre-meeting to the EIR. Um, tonight's meeting is in regards to the environmental impact report uh, for the Berkeley High School tennis project and parking structure known as the Milvia Street Project. Um, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to go over or to accept input rather regarding the environmental impact report and any community concerns around that. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Steve Nowak, here in a moment. Um, but we'll do a quick round of introductions for those of you who don't know everyone. Uh, Steve, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, good evening. My name is Steve Nowak. I'm uh, the principal in charge for this project, and I work for PlaceWorks, uh, a consulting firm uh, located in Berkeley. Thank you. Hanato. Yeah, my name is Hinata Morales. I'm an architect with Watry Design, and we'll be helping uh, preparing the bridging documents for the project. Prachi? Prachi Amin, BPCS Program Manager at Berkeley Unified. Jennifer? Uh, Jennifer Kerr, Vanpo Construction Services uh, Project Manager. Work. Hey everyone, my name's Rourke. I'm a planner with PlaceWorks, uh, working with Steve on this project. Wonderful. And my name is John Calise. I'm the Executive Director of Facilities for Berkeley Unified. So with that, again, thank you everybody for joining and I'm going to pass it over to Steve Nowak. Thank you. Great. So uh, this shows that you've disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, okay. Let's fix that real quick. Hang on one second. Sorry about that. All right, Steve, you should be able to use that now. Okay, thank you. Can everybody see the uh, presentation or just the draft? Uh, what we're looking at is, is at the presentation view, but it has the next slide appearing on it as well. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, uh, we've already done introductions, uh, so hopefully you know who we are now. Um, tonight, I'm going to provide just a brief uh, pro uh, information on the project background and overview, the purpose of the scoping meeting, a little bit uh, on what an environmental impact report is. Then we will open it up for public comments, and then uh, we'll uh, go into next steps. One thing I would like to note tonight, we're, we're very, we very much acknowledge that this, uh, the uh, notice of preparation was released earlier this week, and it is a longer document be, because it does include uh, an initial environmental study that 
uh, addresses thresholds that would not apply to this project. So I understand that uh, there has not been a lot of time for, uh, for you all to uh, review that and provide comments. So we are, uh, we will be having a second meeting, which is uh, listed in the notice of preparation, and that will be on October 20th at the same time. And there is a, an additional link for that meeting in the, uh, the notice of preparation uh, document. So essentially the project itself, the, the new um, tennis and parking facility uh, is on the east side of Milvia between Bancroft Way and Durant. It's uh, currently used as a parking, uh, parking for Berkeley High School staff. Uh, uh, the city zoning is commercial downtown mixed use. Um, the site itself is surrounded by residential development um, to the east and south. Uh, there is some commercial development and residential development to the north. And of course, Berkeley High is directly uh, west of the project on Milvia. Project components includes uh, three uh, stories of parking, uh, including a total of 239 parking stalls on three levels. Um, and this is actually adding 119 stalls um, compared to what's on the existing lot. Uh, the total height, uh, including the elevator building, is 47 feet. And then at the top of the building would be um, four roof, rooftop tennis courts, which would include uh, lights and restrooms. Uh, and here is just a, uh, the conceptual elevation looking at the project from uh, Milvia and Bancroft. You can see the three stories of parking and uh, tennis on the top. The uh, ingress and egress would be on Durant um, with uh, then stairs and elevators located at the uh, north and south corners uh, on the, at the Milvia elevation side. Here's just a, a direct street view from Milvia. Again, these are conceptual plans. Uh, the project is in its conceptual phase. The, the ultimate design would be um, uh, done uh, subsequent to uh, clearance of the EIR and then going into the next phase of the project. Here's a cross section showing um, 77 stalls on the first floor, 80 stalls on the second floor, and 82 stalls on the third floor with the tennis courts on top. So tonight, um, we're, the purpose of this scoping meeting is really to introduce the uh, environmental impact report for the project. We talked about the project specifications, and the, the, the gist of tonight's meeting is to really solicit comments on the content of the EIR. In other words, issues that should be addressed in the EIR and issues that pertain to the environmental analysis. Um, we're really not talking about uh, the merits of the project tonight. Again, it's really uh, focusing on uh, what should be evaluated in the EIR. And uh, tonight, the format is we'll be, we'll be taking your comments during uh, when we open it up for public comment. We're really not going to be providing much in the way of, of responses at this meeting. This is really to listen and to take notes and then make sure that your concerns are addressed in the document. Again, I want to emphasize that there'll be another opportunity for you to express concerns on the content of the EIR on October 20th as well. So the California Environmental Quality Act, it's the state's primary environmental law. Um, it uh, was adopted. I, uh, back in 1971. It's been around for a long time. And it really, the, the gist of the, the law is it requires that public agencies disclose environmental impacts that have a potential for a physical effect on the environment before uh, a project is approved. The EIR identifies ways to avoid or reduce potential impacts through mitigation measures. Uh, and then it also includes project alternatives to address uh, potential impacts or especially impacts that cannot be fully mitigated. So it's a comprehensive disclosure document that um, does not deny or approve a project, but it's, a dis it's to disclose what the impacts are before an agency moves forward with that project. Um, and I pretty much just noted this, um, it, the, the EIR must be certified as correct by the lead agency. In this case, the lead agency is the district uh, prior to approval of the project. 
So um, in this project, the, we in the notice of preparation, we did include an initial environmental study checklist, which contained all of the topics that are addressed in an EIR. And through that process, we determined um, that based on uh, either uh, kind of logic that a, a certain topic would not apply to this project, based on regulatory requirements uh, where the project has to uh, avoid a certain impact as a result of regulatory requirements. Um, and again, just where, the, where if, uh, the topic itself wouldn't fit with the location of the project, we've been able to what we would call scope out uh, topics that will not be addressed uh, directly in the EIR. Um, we're certainly open to receiving comments on that initial study uh, that will be part of the record, that will be part of the draft EIR. And certainly um, when we ask for comments on the draft EIR, we will also take comments on the conclusions of that initial study. So the topics that we'll, we'll be focusing on in the EIR include aesthetics, air quality, which includes uh, health risk and greenhouse gases, cultural resources, geology and soils, I mentioned greenhouse gas emissions, energy, noise, transportation, we'll primarily be looking at uh, safety and circulation regarding the, the activities surrounding the garage, um, tribal cultural resources, recreation and utilities and service systems. I want to just provide a uh, kind of a where we are in the process. We're early in the EIR stage. Um, we released the notice of preparation this week. Um, the notice of pre preparation includes a 30 day scoping period to receive comments on the content of the document. And as I've noted, as I've mentioned, we do have this scoping meeting as well as one towards the end of the scoping period. Once we that comment period is closed, we will then uh, conduct the environmental re review where we will look at the analysis and identification of environmental impacts and mitigation measures. Those will be folded into the draft EIR. Once the draft EIR is completed, then the 45 day comment review period starts to receive input on the contents and the conclusions of the EIR. And we will notice that, uh, provide the same level of no notice on that that we have for this uh, notice of preparation. Once then the 45 day period is closed, we have comments, we will prepare the final EIR. The final EIR will um, include all the comments, will provide direct responses to those comments and where um, suggestions for additions or changes to the project or to the EIR are recommended will be including sections of the draft EIR that are changed as a result of either agency or public comments. We'll also be providing um, a mitigation uh, monitoring program, which lists all the mitigation measures, as well as um, who's responsible for implementation and the timing, so that there's a, a kind of a, uh, a, a story to tell in terms of what the EIR contains and then how those mitigations will be applied to the project. That will then be brought to the uh, the board of uh, the district board of trustees in a hearing, and there will be uh, opportunity for public comment at that hearing as well. And then, uh, assuming that the EIR, the board agrees, the EIR would be certified as accurate for that meeting, uh, at that meeting, and then um, the next phases of the project would occur. So tonight again. Uh, we're going to open this up to receive public comments on the technical issues to address in the EIR, as well as the appropriate range of alternatives to evaluate. We really ask that the comments again focus on the environmental impacts of the proposed project. And um, I just want to note that um, in addition to tonight's meeting, where we will take your comments, uh, we encourage you to uh, provide either written or email comments as well. Oftentimes that allows you the opportunity to provide a more thorough, thorough comments. And it's great to get that record for us as well. So I certainly do encourage you to submit either uh, written uh, mail comments or uh, uh, email comments. With that, we can open the project up for the hearing. So I guess, Jennifer, do you, do you wanna? 
start? Steve, it might be helpful for the purpose of the timer if you go ahead and stop sharing before we start allowing for, for, for public comment. Okay, yeah, if you guys are ready, we have our first hand up of the timer. Okay, we'll start with uh, Jackie Erb. I'll um, turn on your microphone. Here you go. Hang on. Go ahead. Second. Oh, sorry, one second, Jackie. Jen, the, uh, the timer app just actually quit working on Zoom, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we do need to keep track on time on public comment. That app actually just crashed. Okay. I'll just. I, I believe just get, Steve said it was three minutes for public comment, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. I'll just take a keep an eye on the clock. Okay. So can I start? Oh. Hi, this yes. is Jackie Irby. If you don't mind giving me a one minute warning, I'd appreciate it. Yep. Uh -huh. um, so my name is Jackie Irby. I am uh, on the Walk Bike Berkeley Coordinating Committee. Um, I understand that you want the comments focused on the CEQA process and not on the overall merits of the project. Um, so I will do that. Uh, my comments are primarily around the transportation uh, study portion of the environmental impact report, and we want to make sure that the project impact, especially on vulnerable street users, is assessed. Uh, there are many vulnerable street users, users in this area. Uh, there are existing protected bike lanes on Milvia Street. Um, when that project was studied, they had over 500 cyclists passing through nearby intersections during evening commute hours, so it's a substantial route for cyclists. Uh, there's a planned protected bike lane that's going to be installed uh, on the south side of Bancroft Street uh, in late 2020, or I think, I'm not sure when, but in 2023. Um, and those two streets are uh, border the project. In addition, uh, Shattuck Avenue with the intersections of Bancroft Way and Durant Avenue um, are identified as high risk intersection uh, areas in the City of Berkeley Vision Zero Action Plan because there have been past collisions causing severe injuries to pedestrians at those locations. Um, so, and then many of the bicyclists in this area uh, are young people, Berkeley High students, um, and they're arriving and uh, departing campus kind of at the same time that people would be driving to and from campus. So that's kind of the background on what we, why we want those areas or why we think this needs to be assessed carefully for this project. Uh, the project, because of the, these vulnerable street users. Um, specifically, I want to request that the, pro the post project is assessed, uh, meaning the final project with the garage, how traffic circulation in and out of the garage impacts the vulnerable intersections on Shattuck, uh, as well One as more minute. bike lanes on um, Bancroft and Milvia. In addition, I want to make sure that the during construction impact is assessed as well. Uh, as I'm sure you guys are aware, construction causes temporary impacts to the surrounding area that are gonna be different than the post project that could cause even more uh, substantial concerns for these vulnerable street users. Um, and we'd like to see site staging plans, circulations and truck turn studies showing how trucks are coming in and out of the site during construction how anticipated road sidewalk and bike lane closures during construction are gonna impact vulnerable street users and what the proposed mitigation measures are to eliminate these safety issues during construction. So both the post project and during construction. Um, and then we wanna make sure that in addition to evaluating the typical evening and morning peak commute hours that the school peak times are also evaluated so that includes the morning and evening for the post project, but also the lunch hour during construction because a flood of students minutes. are there. All right, so that's what I wanted to focus on. Thank you very much for the opportunity to provide comment. 
Thanks, Jackie. And it looks like the app is working now. I just was able to refresh it. So we'll try it with our next speaker. Perfect. I'll let you that out before I promote the next person. Please promote them. I have to start it once they start speaking. Oh, okay, sorry. Alrighty, next. And again, I apologize if I pronounce anybody's names wrong. Um, it looks like Celia Rios, I'll allow you to talk. Okay. Hello. Hello. It's pronounced Cielo. Cielo, sorry about that. Yeah, like S-Y-E-H-L-O, Cielo. Um, so I have a couple of different comments and questions, and I'll be putting this in an email in a more structured format. Um, I have a few. So in the environmental analysis, should the hazards and hazardous materials also include analysis, excuse me, of the impact of gas and oil leaks from the cars that will be parking there? Wouldn't this also have potential impact on water, water quality and detrimental environmental impact from runoff? I don't, that sentence doesn't make sense, but I read that. Detrimental environmental impact from runoff with the gas and the oil. Um, my next comment is land use and planning doesn't appear to reflect issues surrounding the protected bike lanes on Milvia, as well as the Berkeley policy T35, which includes better utilization of existing parking, like the Center Street garage. Um, and then my next comment is, I also wanted to ask about the fire and health services that might be needed in the event of an emergency, not just in the parking structure, but for our um, athletes as well. I don't see that as having a significant impact in the document itself. And it seems like something to consider given sports injuries um, and accessing that third floor in the event of an emergency earthquake, um, any of those things that could happen. And then my fourth comment uh, is also a question. When will the district complete a transportation analysis to understand how our community gets to and from school? Um, I realize that this is a focus on Berkeley High, but the teachers and staff at my daughter's elementary school, Emerson, are also subject to a two hour limit and are competing for spaces with the Southside community as well as Cal. Um, We've had issues at our school with IAs who need to assist students in their uh, learning spaces that need constant um, supervision that are having to scramble out of classrooms to ensure that those children are the teachers are able to keep the kids safe in that time. So within the scope, if this is something as well that could be considered um, for all of our teachers and all of our staff with people that cannot afford to live in Berkeley and have to travel a really long way and they can't really afford all the parking tickets that they're getting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next is Peter Wright. Hi, um, I'm, I'm uh, making some comments on this with regard to three of the items we talked about, recreation, transportation, and greenhouse gas emissions. I represent the, uh, the tennis people and, and we actually uh, love this project. And I, I was interested, our, our first speaker talked about um, temporary construction impacts and uh, the loss of the tennis courts was a temporary construction impact in 2001. They'd been there for 50 years, but there was construction on the Berkeley High campus. Um, and they were temporarily taken away. And for the last 20 years, we've been trying to get the tennis courts back. So thank you for this. Um, in terms of scrambling out of the classrooms and how that affects the recreation of, of the, the tennis teams, um, the tennis teams, and I'm not sure if this is in the report or not, they currently have to travel across town uh, to be able to participate uh, on other sites. So the transportation of these uh, students scrambling out of class uh, to go to other sites uh, in Berkeley is uh, is problematic from that standpoint, and um, and and interestingly, Berkeley High School, just as a, a matter of reference, that maybe should be put in the report is there are eleven schools in the um, the West Alameda County Conference, and uh, of those eleven schools, their public schools, uh, only one of them does not have tennis courts and that is Berkeley High School. So thank you again for, for your work on this project. I don't know how that fits into the EIR and to, to CEQA, but there are certainly impacts uh, on those uh, young people at, at Berkeley High School and the surrounding community. 
Thank you. Okay, next is Charles Siegel. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good. I would like to suggest that as one alternative, the EIR should study a trip reduction alternative. How much could you do to what what could you do to reduce the number of automobile trips to campus and thereby reduce the amount of new parking that's needed or eliminated? Two two possible things you could do very obviously. One is transportation demand management or called TDM, and that is there's a long, long list of possible transportation demand management strategies. Um, one is parking cash out. If people don't use free parking, give them the right to take cash instead of parking. That gives them the incentive to do something else instead of driving. The second alternative, the second way of reducing trips that I would suggest is um, by building workforce housing on the site and the tennis courts could be on the roof of the workforce housing. Um, you know, obviously many people cannot afford to live in Berkeley and are forced to travel long distances. How many of those would want to live in workforce housing on this site and be able to walk to school rather than having to drive to school? And um, with both of these, I think you should also look at the strategy of renting parking in the center street garage so it's not needed on this lot. If it's possible to reduce it enough, it should be then it should be possible to provide all the needed parking in the center street lot. And so as I understand it, I believe that the high school gives free parking to teachers now, but does not do any transportation demand management. You provide an incentive for people to drive and do not provide an incentive for them to use other forms of transportation. So obviously you have a shortage of parking if you do that. You know, if, if you gave people sirloin steaks for free, people would want a lot of sirloin steaks. Give people parking for free, people want a lot of parking. So the EIR should study an alternative that looks at how to reduce the demand for parking. And if you look at the impacts of that and compare it with the build alternative, it's obviously far, far better in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, energy consumption, and other environmental impacts. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is Matt Weber. Uh, thank you, uh, Matt Weber here, and I appreciate the opportunity to comment. Uh, I wanted to, to start by uh, commenting on the alternative that I think uh, should be studied, which I think is a, a far superior, uh, uh, environmentally speaking, and, and that is what some have noted, both uh, implementing a, a TDM program to reduce the amount of parking required and or uh, leasing space at one of the many garages that have capacity even pre-COVID. Uh, for instance, the, uh, the city center garage that has uh, over uh, 240 stalls, which is the current required number of stalls based on no TDMs. And why is it environmentally superior? Uh, I think uh, uh, once you study it, you'll find there's construction impacts due to emissions, uh, there's a high carbon content of the concrete itself in the production of the, of the parking structure that should be part of the study of, uh, of that um, you know, uh, base scenario. There's, of course, uh, implications to noise and circulation during construction as well. So uh, a no-build scenario in which you're, you're leasing space and a no-build is one of the required the scenarios, uh, as you know, that need to be studied under CEQA. Uh, would be far superior while meeting the objectives of the project. Uh, I also recommend that uh, this uh, analysis uh, take a look at uh, the um, capital, the maintenance and the operational costs and staff needed to operate such a proposed garage. I understand that's uh, may maybe not required under CEQA, but I think it's very important for the decision makers to understand uh, what they're getting themselves into. 
Uh, and of course, um, additionally, parking would be available sooner if it were leased rather than built. Uh, last comment I'd like to make is that where is the bike parking proposed? There should be significant secure bike parking. Uh, we're so close to transit, uh, and uh, this is a, a missed opportunity. What should be built on this site is secure bike parking and tennis courts. Tennis courts were what was taken away uh, from uh, the tennis team, and so they should be built here or, or nearby. Thank you. Hi, can you hear me? I assume you called my name. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eliza Lefkoe. Sorry. That's Go okay. <laughs> I'm a BUSD parent and a member of Walk Bike Berkeley. Um, I want to support the calls here for um, examining an, a no build alternative um, or uh, and the way that can be accomplished again is with implementing a transportation demand management um, uh, project. Uh, as I, just as a reminder, the vision in BUSD's sustainability report is that BUSD should be non-polluting whenever feasible and that single family trips should be reduced to less than 20% by 2025. But um, there's no incentive to do that for staff whatsoever. Um, right now, that driving a car is being heavily subsidized by the district with no incentives whatsoever for people to take any sort of uh, alternative transportation. Instead, subsidize uh, the you know, walking, biking, transit, and have people pay, give people a uh, charge for parking, give people a parking allowance. People can pocket the money if they don't use it or if they use less expensive things. This is a standard thing and should be implemented. Any um, remaining trips that cannot be made through through active or shared transportation, um, we should investigate a short-term lease and eventually a purchase of uh, the Center Street Garage. We can enter in through the bond money, a short-term lease, if we also have a plan to uh, purchase, uh, to, to go into a capital project. Um, we know from the city, we have data that never since the start of the uh, start of the garage, Center Street Garage, has it ever exceeded 50% capacity? This is before COVID. We know that the capacity is extremely high. There are extremely high number of spaces. We have the data from the city itself, um, and there are ample spaces. So if you implement a transportation demand management, you may only end up needing 130 or fewer spots. You may not need the 240 spots. Um, then you enter into an agreement, very short term, you get a lease with uh, teachers get parking as soon as they need to. That space can be freed up to use for school facilities. The tennis courts should absolutely be built and they should be built in their original location, which is Mollering Field, the east side of Derby Field where there are ample plans to build this, please investigate building the tennis there, which is where the tennis advocates wanted this in the first place. Um, that would happen faster with the lease and then the, long, uh, the longer term purchase and the moving of the tennis courts to Derby Field. Thank you. Okay, those are all of the hands that were raised. Is there anybody else that had comment? Go ahead and raise your hand if you do. Okay, seeing none, Steve, do you wanna pick that back up? Sure, um, I will uh, just, I'm gonna pull up the one, uh, share my screen one more time, just make sure everybody sees. I uh, just want to make sure that everybody sees uh, that where to uh, provide written comments, uh, either through email or uh, letters. Uh, and just want to thank everybody for attending the meeting tonight. And um, we certainly look forward to um, 
possibly having additional uh, people at the next meeting on October 20th. The meeting format will be very much the same, so there will be additional opportunities for comment. So uh, thank you, everybody. Really appreciate your uh, time to join us tonight. And I will echo that, Steve. Thank you very much to all the community members who came out and offered their comments. We greatly appreciate it, and we appreciate your time this evening. So with that, um, I think we may be able to wrap up the meeting. Seeing no objections. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone.